Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, we're coming in with this week's Power Book 2, Episode 9, A Fair Fight. Yeah, Before man. we get into the episode, I want to invite you all to come on over to Lamont Tice's channel on this Wednesday, which will be February the 2nd. He's going to have us on. It is going to be at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we're going to be live on StreamYard, just chatting it up or talking about some couples talk, some power talk, all that yeah, good man. stuff. So I invite you all. Like I said, come on over there. Have a yeah. good time. Have a good banter with us. It's very rare that we go live. So that'll be an opportunity for you to catch us on another person's channel. All right, you did? Yeah, man. See you there. First freaking all, this was awesome episode man they Absolutely. gave they gave us the old power tease the type of episodes that leave you with a lot of questions and scratch no your be like what the fuck and then they had yeah. the nerve to slap us with the <laughs> okie doke this week oh mecca man. That mecca the, is a freaking snitch the, really hey no 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 not just any snitch the goat, goat of, of global, global snitching. snitching like come Really? Yeah. I, I did not. I did not. I didn't see that see one that coming. Because mm -hmm. we all mm -hmm. been waiting on the war between him and Lorenzo to only come to find out that you where you are. Because, because of you being a snitch. Because we put that on Lorenzo. Yeah. We said Lorenzo was the head. <laughs> he still might be because, he, yeah. He's Everybody at this point is suspect. Yeah. And, I mean, they ain't never not been suspect. <laughs> but the lens on them right now is like this. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let, let's let's get into it. Let's talk about this episode, man. So we start off, which I was very confused because Tate was writing on the board about un about the unfair fight and Tariq was coming to class and it was dark and nobody was there. And I was like, what's going on? You know, I know Professor Miracle just... Um, Ingram, please. Well, Professor... <laughs> no, it's Milgram. Is it Milgram? Yeah, Professor Milgram. Just committed suicide that we think, but we know Monet was the one that killed her. But that's the way that they spinning it. We don't know that she killed herself. I mean, we guessing. I mean, I I, I don't know. Suicide is what they call <laughs> that, it. Yeah, that's what they saying. So Tariq goes in class, and so when he walks up to Tate, <laughs> Tate turns into Jabari, and then this craziness happened where he started to see everybody that was connected to his moves that Everybody. ended up getting killed. Body. So, so it was Kanan, Milgram, Jabari, um, Lauren came, uh, Kanan came, his sister came. So I was like, what in the hell is going on? Ooh, but, that was foreshadowing. Yeah. Because Lauren wasn't dead yet. Yeah, she was not dead yet. Oh, dang. dang. She was, <laughs> that's right, she wasn't dead. So we was like, by this time everything was going on, we knew that he was dreaming, especially when, Lauren, when um, the phone rang. And uh, Professor Miracle said, "This is your dad. You need, you to, need answer. to answer this." And even Lauren said, "You need to answer." Then he, and then we see Tariq just just wake up. up. And I was like, "Dang!" But I forgot he that did. all of those people was connected to him. Keisha. The, and, yep. And it was all like because of you. Yeah. And my son Cash don't have a dad. I mean, have a mom. And I'm like, there's a lot of bodies a that have dropped of bodies. because of him. Yup. <laughs> I didn't even. I, I had just forgotten. like his daddy, man. Mm -hmm. The just same like thing. So we see Tate and Kamal talking. So Kamal basically found his place, you know, with his new job that Tate helped him get. Was Tate could constantly remind him yes. that he the one to help them get it. So Kamal slipped up and told Tate that it just it's this lady, this drunk lady, keep, keep on, on call, calling, calling me and telling me that. She saw two people at the Jabari killing, not just one. And I was like, who is this drunk lady? Don't let me tell you this big mama is calling and talking Ooh. to this big mama. Because the only, <laughs> drunk, lady, only drunk lady that I can think about on power is big mama. And, hey. and the question is, if it is big mama, what the hell she doing out there that time of night? And why she telling on her grandson? Because she right. mad because he don't put her in the system? Yep. <laughs> Don't cut her check and, off? Uh, yeah, try to, and try to get uh, custody of gas, yeah. So I, <laughs> y'all, do y'all think it's Big Mama? I ain't even thinking about, I don't think it's Big Mama, but that was but good. It's, but it's, but yeah. it's so co co coincidental, if I'm saying that no, right. No, you didn't, but it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so then we see uh, Davis give Tariq a call and be like, what does Tate have on you that I don't know? And he was like, Tate ain't got skin on me. But which we do know that Tate mm -hmm. does have skin on you. And Davis was like, because Jenny wants to put him on the stand, man. Against you. 
because she believed that he do have something on you, which we said last week. We knew by Professor Ingram being home at her apartment, we knew that Tate was going to be dragged into this. Because you remember, he at the he only at the college because he's <laughs> trying to he's trying to get Sweeney. <laughs> so he ain't there for all this bullshit. So you know he's highly pissed off at Tariq now. So we saw Tariq come finally coming into class, <laughs> coming into class, and he like he looking around. I'll be looking I around like, too. Like, hey, it's <laughs> the same scenario I just woke up from. Yeah. So he started apologizing to Tate. Was like, you know, I'm sorry what happened to. You know, Professor Miriam, you know, I wasn't thinking. And Tate was like, Tariq, you don't ever think. And matter of fact, boy, you got a trial tomorrow. And oh, you had today. Or, you know, it was the next, I think it was okay. the next day. And you haven't delivered on the promise that you promised me with the picture. And Tariq was like, I already gave you what you needed. He was like, no, 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 no. no, no, no. I need the evidence. I need the proof because hearsay ain't nothing. He's like, better yet, if you don't get it to me, I'm gonna rip you apart on the stand tomorrow. I said, oh. But I'm, I'm, I started questioning. I was like, wait a minute. Tate already had this conversation with you, Tariq. He that did. You, that you were supposed to deliver the picture. So why was sudden you telling him like I, this is new? Yeah, I, I done done what you said, dude. But you ain't gave him the picture. Right. Yeah. So physical evidence. Yeah. The ocular. Yeah. Proof. But here's the thing. Why couldn't he just take a picture of the picture and right. send it to Tate? Yeah. Now I know that the physical picture means a whole lot more, but. That would have did. Yeah. So now we see uh, Mecca and Kane at the crib. And so Kane was like, yep, Mecca, time for me to go out. And, I done did the work he told me to do. I got to go home. I need to bounce and go home. Mecca like, uh, like hell you is. Matter of fact, you going to stay here all day. Like, Kane, no, nah, I ain't got time for that bullshit. I, I got to go, go home. home. So Kane go to walk out and Mecca grab him by the neck. <laughs> And we was like, uh-oh, Mecca is getting ready to confront him about the robbery last week. But no, not this time. He grabbed him by the throat, bring him over to the chopping block, tell him, you put your hand. I was like, wait, 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 I wait. Said, you ain't going to cut his hand like, off. Is you, is you fitting to cut? Can't, you know, that's Monet's son, and you fitting to cut his fingers off? So I was like, okay, what's, what, where's Mecca he going said, with this? I need the prince. He ended up putting getting getting the prints so he could track Kane and lock Kane <laughs> and be the number one. Yeah, man. and track him everywhere he go. And now he made Kane the number two, which y'all said that last week in the comments that now Kane was gonna be coming number two. But when we saw that, we was like, wait a minute. So Mecca really don't know that he did it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, this is kind of odd. But hey. We just we gonna get there. We just gonna go ahead and get to it. So he told Kane, "You need to call your pops and tell your pops that we ain't got no product <laughs> because we just got robbed." Mm -hmm. So Kane get on the phone and he tells Lorenzo, "Hey, Poppy, um, we ain't got no product." He was like, "What you mean? We ain't got no product." Matter of fact, Kane, you need to come home. He was exactly. like, "I'm no, sorry, Bobby. pops. I, I can't. You Bobby, know, I, gotta, I can't do that. <laughs> I gotta go." So in the trailer last week when we saw him throwing the thing up against the mirror, we was thinking that my wife was saying usually when people break the mirror, that means they about to kill somebody. About to kill somebody. So or somebody great guy. But we see he threw the thing up against the mirror because the product was cut off because of the robbery last week. So by this time, uh, Drew and Diana walks in the room and see him uh, upset. And so Lil Renzo was like, you know, we, we don't got the shipment. And 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 um, GTG won't answer the phone, so I'm I'm about ready to go pay them a visit. I'm no. about ready to go pay little Guap a visit, cause I bet you he gonna talk when I'm in his face. And so by this time, Drew has to confess about what really happened. Drew because sold there, too much. Yeah, I mean he had to, to. Yeah, because he was going to confront little Guap, but little Guap is dead, so he ain't had no choice. But he ain't had to write his mama out. Oh uh, well. Well, they just doing a whole lot of rap now. So <laughs> Drew tells Lorenzo, you know what? Uh, about that. <laughs> Last week we set up a thing and we robbed the connect. We robbed the connect because he cut Monet off. Yeah, Monet. And, yeah, <laughs> and he told him, yeah, Monet was still working with Tariq, and Donna was like, I tried to tell you, Poppy. He did. So so Lorenzo was like, so Drew, you lied to me. 
I'm trying to make you my right hand man. I thought I could trust you. You don't think? Because you were not think. ready. And he was like, "Well, I'm um, happy I am ready. I, I am ready, but that was my only only way I did that bull skip because that was my only shot at little guap. I owed him, I a, owed bullet. him a bullet. So he said, "You risked our whole business for revenge." Retaliation. <laughs> Ain't this what the game is about? But got Don Lorenzo before he threw that thing against the wall. He was sitting on that bed looking like a sick puppy. He was broken I mean, hearted. His I mean, you. <laughs> I said, Lord, just just bring out the brown. Look at the slow song. Say your your wife is cheating on you, and now you don't have a supply. And now you up in this house like a single female with all these kids. <laughs> <laughs> so now he pissed off at. Diana, and he pissed off at Drew and told him, hey, gotta fix this. Y'all gotta fix this. Y'all need to go and get me my drugs. But I, I was like, I thought he was gonna let Diana get off because Diana had been trying to warn him anyway. So she ain't had nothing to do with it because they was the one that lied to her. So she wouldn't tell um, so Lorenzo. Out the way. So now she's still stuck in this bull skin. So her and Drew went to the room to make the plan. And Drew was like, you know what? If you didn't open up your big mouth at the dinner table, none, we of, would, none of it, we would be going through this skit. She was like, that ain't fair. This ain't my fault. And she was like, and the reason that y'all sent me over there to be at the trial was because now I realized y'all wanted me out the way. Yeah. She was like, so I know I'm a pawn in this as well. I was <laughs> exactly. like, yeah, you are. You were willing participate to be in the pawn, but yes, you are. So what their plan was to get the drugs, uh, Drew had to go and get Everett's school card, this badge, to get in. this access badge, and Diana had to get with Tariq to get the QR code to be able to get the lockers that they got up the up, upstairs and that thing. And I was like, how are they going to, is they really, is they, is they really going to pull that off? So we see that she went over there and she went over to Tariq and she crying and saying, all my family hates oh, me. They don't Put love me on. and crying. And I was like, Tariq, she pulled the okie doke on you, bro. She pulled the Karen tears from out of somewhere yep. <laughs> and they worked. Oh, they worked. And then she said, can I get a water? He was like, no, nah, we out them jumps. He was yeah, like, but I, get I, I go to the hall and get you one. She was like, okay. Yeah. So that's how she was able to get the QR code. When he left, she went in his phone and took a picture of the QR code. And then we seen everything. Well, how about the, I don't know if this works for real. We're going to have to test this. That she took um, a video of him like live or a video that she had and put it in front of his phone yeah. for the facial recognition. Yeah, that was crazy. Oh, we gotta, we gotta yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm going to see that. I'm going to see if that really works. Yeah, that's a good point. Because yeah, if that's is. the case, I'm going to take a picture of you to get your phone and they can open it up. Hell, <laughs> get a YouTube video of us and find our phone. Be like, here they go. Bloop, <laughs> That's scary. Yeah, and so we saw that Drew was over there having sex with Everett. And then he stopped in the middle of it, went in the bathroom, went into his jean pocket and his wallet. And got the school card. got the school card, and so we see them going up to the original spot where they got the lockers at, and they put the QR code on there. I didn't know they had so many lockers. I, I thought it was one. I or thought two. it was one. Yeah, one or two lockers, man. They like they had about ten lockers. They had the Amazon Prime down pat. Yeah. <laughs> so they end up going and getting all getting all the, the uh, drugs out of there, and I was like. This is crazy. Man, too easy. Because matter of fact, it made me think about something that I knew about way back in the day. Somebody that I knew that told me that some people that they knew stole something from a place. And then when they stole it. <laughs> uh, you're talking about my it, cousin. Yeah. It fell off the back of the truck or what they stole. But when it fell out the back of the truck, somebody else came along. And stole it from and, him. And stole it out. They, what they did is stole it. They picked it up for what it, where it fell off the truck. That person drove it home and put it <laughs> and put it in their shed, and they went to their his house it's and so stole it back from them. So I was like, "This is the same thing." They went to Mecca and stole the drugs from Mecca, and now they coming back and steal the drugs it. from Tariq, <laughs> and then giving it to Poppy. Giving to Poppy, yeah. So here he can sell it, and I'm yeah. sitting here thinking, like, okay, hold on, wait a minute. <clears throat> this amount of drugs back on the streets in the hands of Lorenzo. Yeah. Ain't this gonna blow back on Larissa? We're gonna get there. Yeah. But I was like, okay, so the moment that Mecca sees some movement in the streets when it comes to drugs and he is the supplier of the drugs that was stolen, boom. Yeah. Who stole my drugs? Who's yeah. selling drugs? Lorenzo. That's what I was thinking in my mind, as Mike B would say. 
Yeah. Now we now we're in court and Tate is on the stand and Jenny is questioning him, <sighs> basically asking him did he know anything else. He was like, I don't know anything else. And so Davis <laughs> asked him, did uh, David said, Hey, yo, I know that your brother is now working for the U.S. Attorney's Office. Um, have he basically said anything to you he's about the case? Yeah. He's straight laced. He, he's straight laced, you know. But but he did tell me <laughs> that this drunk lady had been calling and was saying is that it wasn't just one person at the Jabari. It was, it was two, two at the Jabari where Jabari was killed at. Davis was like so they was say, like, what? what? And you see, and you see, um, <laughs> Kamal was like, what the fuck? So why would you do that to me? But we already know that Tate don't give a damn about nobody but nobody. himself. That brother if he ran good. his brother out like that, you can get it. And I'm like, you just got to help your brother get a job. And now you exposing inside information that he wasn't supposed to even tell you. Right. And now you telling it in court. Where it has to be dealt with. Exactly, and that was the purpose. But thank God it didn't affect, it didn't affect his job, but it screwed Jenny because Jenny was like object, and so she was like, so they was like, wait a minute, uh, this should be a cause for this to be thrown out because they've been withholding information, uh, withholding information. But we know Jenny don't know anything about this, so that was well played by Tate to buy to reek them some more time. Yeah, because the judge was like, oh, I can't, uh, basically, I yeah. can't unhear this. You yeah. brought this in here. We got to deal with it now. Yeah. 48 hours. Yeah, you got 48 hours to uh to figure to figure this all That's it. out. Think and figure. Figure yeah. it out. <laughs> so Monet now is up in a tizzy because uh, Zeke is not answering his phone in, in like fashion. I wouldn't answer the phone for you. You've been lying to me all my life. And then I but, find out that you're trying to get a free ride on me absolutely. in the NBA so you can get out the game. So, yeah, I wouldn't answer the phone to, for you either. But where's she at, though? My auntie mom. <laughs> but where's she at, though? Say where she at. Oh, where she, she at Don Caves. <laughs> where we said she was going to be. Right over there at Dante's house. So, in the middle of her and Dante, he was like, she was telling Dante, basically, you know, Zeke ain't going to come back to me, yada, yada, yada. And so at the same time, Zeke text Dante was like, I want to meet you. So she was like, oh, bet. Let's go. Let's go together. He was let's go. Around. She was like, nah, he only want to see me. So we see him over at the restaurant buying Zeke a beer. And that look that Zeke had on his face. <laughs> so Dante told Zeke, say, you know what, son, you ain't got nothing to worry about. What I'm going to do, you can go ahead and take a break from school. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hire you a private coach. So that way you can kind of keep your head straight and be practicing before the draft. But the deal is you have to talk to Monet because she he promised Monet that I'm going to talk to him and everything will be all right. And matter of fact, I'm going to get him to talk, talk to, you to you again. So that actually was a perfect way because we know Zeke loved basketball. So getting a private coach, yeah. <laughs> I remember playing ball and I was in love with the game. So if somebody had offered me a yes, deal Lord. back in the day, to be a, to work with a private coach, I would been down, and I would have took whatever they said um, in order to get it. Now we see Zeke is back at you know one of the press conferences with his coach, and basically he telling wow. you know telling all the news people that I'm I'm get ready you know I'm gonna take a break from school. Um, I got a private coach I'm gonna be working with, mm -hmm. and in the, and in the midst of him you know telling them what his next moves are gonna be. Everybody's phone started going off. I said, oh, no, what don't happen now? <laughs> but let's backtrack. At the beginning of the episode, we saw Monet scrolling through her phone, and on the Daily Stallion, mm -hmm. it had that, you know, of course, uh, Professor Milgram had committed suicide, but it had in there that Z Cross the was the found. one that found her. And like I told y'all last week, keep I said, I know that was going to keep Zeke in. So they've been trying to keep Zeke out of this skit. And only put him further into it. So the reporters were looking at the text, and of course, that's what they saw. And so they started questioning Zeke, you know, what you know about this, and is it true that you're 23 years old? I said, and I I'm mean, like, how in the hell did they find that out that quick? And for it being in the daily it's family step, business, right? How did they find that out that he was 23? Because so all they, the two different households know this. 
Mecca, yeah, and the Tahadas. Exactly. So we was like, it has to come from either one of those two, them two sources, them two, them two places. And the coach told Zeke that if it's, it's true, true that you twenty three, you might well forget about forget Sacramento. Him. You ain't playing for the Kings player. <laughs> so you saw him. Yep. <laughs> so we fast forward over and we see Monet, Zeke, and um, Dante. Dante on the basketball court. And of course, Zeke is pissed off now because he don't know who in the hell ratted him out. And Dante was like, you know what, son? Uh, once again, this ain't no problem. Mm-hmm. All we got to do is uh, hire a PR firm and spin this. And, and Zeke was like, that ain't how it work. Like, and Dante was like, it's going to work the way I say it's, it's going to work. work. I'm like, bro. This is a little bit above your scope. Yeah. Well, don't, yeah. You, can't, you can't do no press release and spend nobody's age. I mean, he's 23. He don't qualify. If he had got ahead of it and said, basically, this is what I found out. You can't know what you don't know. But still, being 23 is going to disqualify. They don't, they, don't, they don't give a fuck. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, the ruse is the ruse. So by this time, from the trailer last week, we remember seeing the guys that were shooting, but we didn't know what they were shooting at. So these guys came through and started shooting at them. Uh -huh. and, uh, so amateur looking. Yeah. And after the shooting, Monet looked at Mecca and was like, is somebody following you? But you notice he did not say no right away. Yeah. There was a hesitation. He was like, oh. And so when he hesitated, she was giving him the look like, you know what? It's something about your A that ain't right. Mm -hmm. Did you see the way she was looking oh, at yeah. him? Oh, yeah. And then they're going to see you. And then I started thinking, I was like, wait a minute. Mecca got up. And he was in the clear opening when he was shooting. And, and those guys were still shooting, too. And, and I was like, hey, and they ain't hit him? Because Monet and, Me and Zeke was hiding behind the trash can. And don't get it twisted. What is Mecca's background, y'all? Military. Military. They don't miss. <laughs> right. Cause when we was uh, when we were uh when we was talking when I was watching it, uh I was like, wait a minute. So did Lorenzo set up I mean not Lorenzo, did Mecca set up a fake shooting to make it look like it was Lorenzo's guys so that he can pull Monet and them in a little bit closer? But at that point I was like, you know what? Monet know it's something about him. Mm -hmm. But she just don't know what it is about him. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We know that Jenny only has 48 hours to get her skit together uh, about this new founding information that came up in court by tape about this lady. Mm -hmm. uh, this drunk lady seeing, these, seeing uh, these two guys killing Jabari. So she's playing the recording in front of Trace, Braden, Braden's father. Yep. Uh, it was Jenny there. Yeah. 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 And somebody else. It was, it was another lady. It was another lady. I don't. I don't know who she is, but it. It don't even it don't matter. matter. So Jenny was asking, basically asking Braden, "Do you know who um, Kane is?" And he was like, "I don't know who he is." And Trace, take on Trace because we can't stand oh. Trace. Tell Trace like that's a lie. We know him. We know exactly who he is. Matter of fact, he, he, picked, he picked us up and made, made us, us go sell him. drugs. Almost got us killed. He know what, he, know what it is. And he, he, is. he know who he is. And so, uh, Braden was like, he's lying. He just only trying to get a, he a cokehead. He, coke he only trying off. to get attention. So, by this time, Jenny had pulled out some photos of Kane's truck showing Trace and him. And they brought up Ramirez's name because you remember I forgot, I had because I had I forgot, forgot about that that Ramirez was out there that night with them. So it was from his dash cam. So Jenny told Braden, um, either you're gonna give us the truth, or from these photos we're gonna say that you and Trace basically was accomplice and killing Ramirez. <laughs> so you need to give us something. So this puts Braden right in, in the a, middle. yeah right in the middle and puts him in a bad spot. So we see, uh, we flip back over to the dorm and to, uh, and her and Tariq's dorm. And so him and Tariq got to talking and he asked Tariq, you know, how is the case going? But you know, Braden this time, he's a little nervous because he, he just been a talk. Yeah, he on the line now for this bull skit to try to protect Tariq. So Tariq said, case is going all right. And, and Tate got up there, said this, said that. 
So Brayden was like, wait, so, Therese, so he spoke on your hair? But so he so Tariq? Tate really did yeah. help you? He was like, how? How? Oh. And then he then Brayden figured it out. So you did get him the picture. And how you got the picture? And I was like, you brought the photo book to the yeah. book. <laughs> That's how he got it. And so now Brayden is hot because he was like, you about ready to get my dad in trouble. And Tariq was like, no, your dad ain't got nothing. Your dad is going to be fine. But Sweeney? this is for Sweeney. No. And now Brayden is hot mm -hmm. on fire. So then we flip over and we see that Brayden was walking down the street and Jenny just pops out of nowhere and offers him a deal. She works fast. <laughs> yeah, she offered him a deal and say, um, basically, you know, if Trace gets on the stand. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. So what she offered him was if you give me enough evidence to put Kane in prison, we don't have to worry about Trace testifying. So if Trace testifying, he's going to be safe because we know if he testified now, Kane is going to kill him. Mm -hmm. And you. Yeah, and you. So I'm like, is Brayden going to take this deal? Is Brayden going to become a snitch to save his own A? Because you remember we've been saying why in the hell is Braden even in the game anyway? He don't need to be in the game. He's just intrigued by the game. Mm -hmm. Now this one got real. The game is so real. what the fuck you going to do, Braden? Is you going to snitch to save your own tail? Or are you going to be a G and keep your mouth shut? So now in the episode, we see that Lauren finally reveals to Tariq why she wore the wire. She yeah. said, I got, I, I, they found drugs in my room. Tariq's like, I know that, I know that. But uh, but that wasn't a reason for you to wear a wire. And she was like, no, um, Carrie convinced me that if I wore the wire and that Braden was the one that was going to get that, that they had their eyes on. So I was wearing the wire to protect, to protect you. you and basically get Braden in trouble. I didn't know it was going to swing that way. And Tariq was like, no, because you already said that you don't really love people that sacrifice for you. Or he was saying that. People who sacrifice for you, you don't show them no love. Something to that degree. And then she pops up and says that uh, that she had, she didn't say Kane, she said Lorenzo. Lorenzo Tejada. That Lorenzo Tejada's voice was on that recording. And Tariq was like, oh, what? What, what did he look like? What did he look like? And she, and she began to describe what he looked like. And Tariq was like, you know what? You need to go to your mom and dad's house right now. Right now. And don't leave until I call you. We got to figure something out. You <laughs> yeah, got to we go. got to, You got to go, baby. We got to figure this thing out. And I was like, here we go, man. I was like, Carrie, you're going to fuck that girl like that. She and did. Yeah, you know it, man. To good protect girl. your own tail. A good girl. Said Lauren was, had perfect attendance, had straight A's. And now she hung up in a freaking murderous drugs bullskit because of her professor that she trusts. Man, Queen Latifah tried to bring her up right on that movie, man. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> she went off to college and look what happened. Yeah. <laughs> so now Tariq tells Effie the deal. So he began to tell Effie about what's basically going on without bringing up Lauren's name. Effie was the one that figured it out. And he told Effie that Lauren wore the wire but telling Effie that he was still trying to protect her. And Effie was like, right. you know the game. You can't have no loose ends. You can't right. do that. You said, she said Malibu Barbie is a snitch. Go. And she, and got, she got to go. And Tariq tells her, well, nah, she's she different. Yeah, she different. You, you don't know who she is. She's different. But, however, Effie is right. Because in the game, you can't trust nobody. Because when she gets squeezed... This is what you get. And we've seen that she got squeezed and she, and she wore, wore a wire. wire. So, yeah. So, Effie, Effie is definitely right But about isn't this it one. weird that you have the guy that you're smashing yeah. talking to you about another girl that he's smashing in a defensive way yeah. to you yeah. while he's smashing. <laughs> Tariq, man, Lord have mercy. Well, Ghost's lawyer, well, Ghost is a state lawyer. He just like I said, did like why, yeah. why did, did you, you take, take him Tariq there? to go see his new foster parents? Not only take him there, but yes, let him see. Parents. I mean, yeah, yes, foster parents, and let him see where they live. And when he got out of the car, he was like, uh, Mr. Mr. St. Patrick. Patrick. No, no, because I actually thought Tariq was ready to go knock on the door. Me too. I said, Alvin, now and you don't made a rookie <laughs> this mistake. So the first thing I thought about, what y'all said in the comments last week, that that, that Yaz is with Ghost and Tasha somewhere. So 
when they showed the parents, so they showed who the dad who the dad was. I could see him, but we could never see the face of the woman. That won't Tasha. But I know it won't Tasha. But but was it not Tasha? It won't Tasha. I don't know. Everyone was they, taller they, than Tasha. They wouldn't. They wouldn't show her face. So I but thought y'all was right. It, I thought y'all was right. I thought suspect that they didn't show the face though. I was like, so is it somebody that he maybe recognizes because they never would show the face? Yeah. And of course, I I believe that this is gonna come back to bite Ghost's estate attorney in the butt because yeah, Tariq did that. Tariq is not gonna let that ride because he was pissed off when when he told him that Ghost said send her to a foster parents when all of y'all are gone and the records are gonna be sealed. So she so she wasn't supposed to be found. That's so it. that's on you know legal documentation and you just went against all that. I thought about that. Remember that um that little video that was floating around years ago with that little boy named Jay's? Give me back my sister. Yeah. Give me my sister. Yeah. I don't care, Mama. Hey, boo boo. Give, <laughs> Give me, me my, back sister. my sister. <laughs> <laughs> he went viral for that. I think that boy got like a million followers yeah. on Instagram or something. Uh, Braden just don't know what to do. So he's talking to Effie, and he was telling to Effie that I'm. At a crossroads, I need to decide whether I need to tell something that will get somebody else in trouble and say my own tale, or do I keep it, it to, or do I take it, keep it myself, and I take it. And Effie told told him correct. She was like, "See, here's the thing, Brady. Yeah, this is the game. This is how it works." And, and uh, Braden was like, well, 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 can't you every now and then take a moral day? Because he was talking about, yeah. about Tariq. Uh, can't you, can you never once in a while take, in the game take a, a, a moral break day? And she was like, no, nah, it don't work that way. She said, you, you basically got to stay yeah. hard 24-7. And she said, some of us, the game just falls in our lap. Right. You, you, you went found the looking game. for the game. Yeah. And the game found you. So, no, you don't get to pick and choose when you be an upstanding citizen in this game. Yep. You got to take it all. And so Effie told him, you know what you need to do. What you need to do. And I said, ooh. And at that same time, here comes Tariq with the solution. Which was, Tariq called him and said, you need to go and pick Lauren up and take her out of town. But we know from that talk with Effie, freaking Braden was already oh, at Lauren's house. So... It seemed like to me he was getting ready to take care of the job there. What but you think? Let's rewind back a little bit because Kane already rolled up on Braden. That's right. And told right. Braden, said, listen, we got a problem. Homegirl got me on the wire. We <clears throat> we you need to take care of that. And Braden was like, No, I can't do that. He was like, I already gave you a gun. If yeah. you don't take care of it, something else gonna be taken care of, and it's gonna be you. Yeah. So Braden knew at that moment <laughs> he had to do it anyway. So he was just waiting for a clear opportunity to do it. It pretty much Tariq served Lauren up on, on a platter, platter. Yeah. to him. Not knowing. Not knowing. <laughs> yeah. But did it, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. We're gonna yeah, talk good. about it at the end. <laughs> back at Mecca House, Mecca comes back, comes back home, and <laughs> oh, Kane once again said, you know what? I I I gotta, I got to go. And by this time, Mecca pulls the gun out. <laughs> And he said, I'm going Kane. out of the country. He said, I'm going out of the country, and I need you to stay here until, I, until I get back. And Kane was like, no. So he ended up pulling the gun out on him and saying, I already know that you robbed me. <laughs> so we were right. Yeah, Everybody so, yeah, was right. Everybody was right. So he knew it. But he was like, where in the fuck is my bag? Is my bag? And he was like, I, I don't know. He said, okay. So he just shut down all access to the tracking thing, shut down the whole house, and locked Kane <laughs> in there until he get back. And activated the tracking. Activated the tracking on the on bag. On the bag. And boop, 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 stands real. So he ended up calling his mama, calling Monet, was like, uh, I'm at the plug's house and he won't let me go. <laughs> so always got to call mama on. Yeah, and so she was like, that don't make sense. So he locks you in there. Ain't he that you keep his phone? Something ain't, something something ain't right. right. You know, why he ain't so, kill you. She said, matter of fact, send me a go picture. ahead and send me a picture of this, of this player. I said, 
Because you remember that she only know Dante by Dante uh -huh. and not by Mecca. She said, so send me a picture of both of them, both of them are still in the <laughs> still in the dark about this, about Mecca. Monet. So by this time, Monet tells Kane, "You need to let Tariq know." So he texts Tariq and lets Tariq know, "Hey, Mecca is looking for his bag and he has a tracker on it." So Tariq goes into the bag and begins to search to see what's on the inside. So he pulls out a passport with Monet's face on it, Drew's face on it. And Diana's face, no, Kane, was Kane, no, Kane's face on it. Kane, yeah. And he was looking like, what the fuck? What is going on? So he found that he also found the tracker in there, and then he pulled out the big guns. The big guns that none of us was expecting. Uh -uh. That he had a photo file from the U.S. Attorney's Office that this ninja then signed a plea and cooperation deal with the fans. So, which means that he has to fully cooperate with them. Anything they need him to do, he has to do it. So, I'm sitting here like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, everything about this situation has been a lie. Yeah. Not that we have always taken their word for, for, for law, but, okay, Dante is Mecca. Mecca is Dante. He went to the military, did he? Yeah. He got out, <laughs> and now he... Mysteriously has all of this money. He's supposed to be kind of straight laced, but he got his hand in the drug game, and now all of it makes sense. Yeah, I'm sitting here like, yeah. all what the hell? So Tariq takes a picture of the court document, and he <laughs> he reaches out to Davis to find out who is Dante Spears. So Davis called him back and said, "How in the hell did you run into this motherfucker?" Don't, don't answer. answer. Don't, yeah. don't answer. <laughs> I want to let you know that he is the he biggest. Dangerous. He is the biggest informant, basically in the world, Craig. Yeah. He and, said he's so highly protected. Yeah. That they fly him to different countries, countries to protect him. Ooh, like what? <laughs> Dante. Dante. Uh, yeah. <laughs> A snitch, really? Come Wow. So, I wasn't ready for that one. So Tariq walks in his dorm, and of course, because he had the tracker on it, Dante had the tracker on the bag, here he is with a gun. And Dante tells Tariq, I know a, a lot about you. Matter of fact, I know your Uncle Tommy. I know your dad, Ghost. And I know what and you I, did to him. And I know what you did to him. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. Now, you being an informant, I know how you most likely know Tommy and, and um and ghosts. And ghosts because if you on the inside and they if they was using you to try to take them down, then you then know you that. know their name. But how in the hell do you know that to re-kill ghosts? That that Because the only person that really truly, 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 truly knows that is Sax. Yeah. Huh. Good point. <laughs> but however, uh Tariq tells him, okay, since you know that, snitch on snitch me. Snitch on me. Ain't that what you do? Because last time I checked, you was the goat of the global oh, snitches. snitches. Now, that was the line of the freaking episode right there. <laughs> so by this time, Mecca is hot. But Tariq, Tariq tells him, say, if you off me, all this going to come out. What, what, what you scared that Monet is going to find out? So now he revealed, I know that you a snitch, and hey. I know that you've been messing with Monet. So what hey. you gonna do? So matter of fact, you need to pay me two mil. That's and I was, was like, Tariq, I was like, that's all you asking for? But I remember that's all Tariq need is two mil no. to finish paying Davis, man. But he need money to live off of. You needed to double that. Right. And he told, <laughs> and he told Mecca, and hey, Mecca said, you think you worth, you know, two, two, two hundred mil? I mean, two, two mil? mil? Uh, Tariq said it ain't about the money. He said, matter of fact, Cash, would Cash will pay way more money than that to know where you to are. know where Dante Spears is at. So here go Dante said, this is the this is this is, this is what we're gonna do. Because Tariq said, you need to open up an offshore account and a fake name. And Dante said, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going I'm going to do that, and I need my bag back before I make the transfer. But he don't have the, the stone. No, he don't have like the stone. Like you said on um, all Davis, about the, Davis had, yeah. All about the Benjamins. Benjamins. Give me back, back my stuff and stones. stones. <laughs> he don't have the stone. So I'm sitting here like, Davis, 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 please, whatever you did with <clears> the stone, bring it back, bring it back. But now we got we to gotta go back and talk about Chef. So we was there 
pissed off last week that he slit Chef's throat and Chef was loyal on his side. And now we know why Chef, why he was so pissed off at Chef for being back in the room because he was afraid Chef was going to find his snitch baby was a man. snitch. Like, but I'm like, as technical as you are, everything is under fingerprint, QR code, tracking devices, all this skit. Why did you have paper documents of you being a snitch? You Can't you put that in some kind of folder with a key code and a QR code and an authenticity code? Now, you won't want to upload that online now. You want to walk around with it physically? <laughs> So now that leads us to... But before, we're going to talk about but, it later. But before, yeah. but before we go there, he told... Michael turned around and told Tariq that when I was in the military, that we were shipped to Georgia, mm. and we was training soldiers and stuff in Georgia, and we had... He was like, some people was on a mission, some people wasn't on a mission. He but they was, only sent the, the worst of the, the worst, worst, the yeah. most ruthless ones out there. So he said, you might know the name Lobos came and he said, Lobos knew I had a price <laughs> and which I did. And he said, I was the one that ratted out Lobos. And when you go to hell, I want you to thank your daddy ghost for taking care of him or, or good looking out. Because he was able to kill Lobos off before Lobos was ever able to realize that Dante Mecca was the snitch against this organization. <sighs> yeah, so we sitting back here waiting for this war between him and Lorenzo only to find out that Mecca is where he is in the game because he got loose lips. He a snitch. Now I'm looking at everybody sideways, real talk. Yeah. <laughs> because we already, like, Yes, Lorenzo got out on a little bit of a technicality, but at the same time, Lorenzo was taking these secret phone calls that he was not letting Mo uh, Monet be privy to. Now we also realize that Mecca is who he is. I'm sitting over here thinking, are they working together to take Monet and her organization out? Yeah, because yeah. at the end of the day, Lorenzo got a chip on his shoulder because... Monet was cheating on him mm -hmm. with an officer while he was on the inside. Yes, she was supposedly doing it so yeah. that she can keep everything off. with the family yeah. off the off, off the, the meter, right. off of everybody's radar. But at the same time, men don't forget skit like that. No. And now to realize that not only that, she has a son, yeah. which <laughs> I'm pretty sure at this point, I'm not trying to be funny. Now everything is starting to make sense to me. Come on now. Or maybe it's not. We don't know. That Lorenzo was sitting over here acting like we had a problem with this. Acting like he did not know who Zeke was. Yeah. Now, nephew or no, I know you've been in prison for a very long time. But you don't know what this boy looks like? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that there were instances where she done sent you a picture. Don't showed you something. You don't read a or, newspaper article. Or at least talked about him up at the prison. So you acting like you. Nigga, you knew. Nigga, so you so knew. now that brings us to the conclusion about we think, well, I think that Mecca was the one that ratted Zeke out to the news, man. I do too. In order to basically manipulate Monet um, to go with him. And that, now it's looking like <clears throat> Lorenzo did it. Yeah. And now she wants to take Lorenzo out. Yeah. She wants to get Mecca to take Lorenzo out. And I'm sitting here like, I think they both setting you up. Yeah. So at this point, yeah, I think, yeah, that they are setting him up. I do. And you think Lorenzo no, is think, on it? I think Lorenzo and Mecca are setting Monet up. Really? I swear think, I do. So Monet uh, uh, tells, uh, tells Mecca that, hey, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go with you. But like the queen said... Uh, Monet was telling him, we have a common enemy, which is Lorenzo. We need to take Lorenzo out. And he was like, we need to come up with a plan. So that's why I still believe, I think they're, that they are setting up Mecca. But you think Lorenzo, think and, and, think Lorenzo and Mecca are setting up Monet? Mo like Monet. Mm. I don't know. Something, <sighs> something just don't feel right about it. I don't know. 
Uh, so now we at the end of the episode where Brayden is doing what, well, supposedly doing what Tariq said, getting Lauren out of town. So he pulls off into this dark back street somewhere, and Lauren was like, we're going to stop here. So he gets out, go in the trunk, grabs a backpack and a gun to tell Lauren to get out. And I was like, here you oh, go. no. I said, Brayden is going to do it. I said, don't shoot do him it. near the car. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's evidence right there. <laughs> And so he switches up and throws her a big bag of money and says, hey, there's a bus stop a mile away. Get on the bus stop. And don't stop. And don't stop. I need you completely off the grid. You can't call your mama, your sister, your brother, nobody. Go. And by this time, we see this car roll up. I was like, who in the hell was that? Right. And, and it was them. How in the hell was they able to find out where they were? And it was a got it was got darn Effie. And so Brayden was like, skit. And so Effie comes over there and she points a gun at Lauren and she begging for her life. And she was like, nope. So Effie snatches her up, knocks her out, throws her in the car, and pulls off. So we left with the point was like, was this a part of their plan? Cause like how did Effie find them in the middle of nowhere? Mm. Unless she put a tracker on Brayden, but I don't know. I This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that it was a setup that Effie and Tariq did against Brayden. Because when it comes down to Tariq, nobody is off limits for him saving his own A. Right. And because Brayden already had a plan that he was going to take her out, then we have Tariq that came behind her with, I mean, came behind him with Effie to figure out a way to really get rid of Lauren, but keep him off of it, but put Brayden in the middle of it because he was the original suspect. Right. Remember? Right. Yep. Yep. And this fool was crazy enough to pick Lauren up from her house. house. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. I think it was all a plan that Effie set up. and Tariq came up with. But what got confusing, we saw at the end of the episode that Effie came back to Tariq dorm gotten the bid, but she had this she guilty like look didn't. on her face like I, I I I done fucked up now. So we don't know if she killed Lauren or not. But I'm from but the way that from she was foreshadowed, she did. Yeah, it, from the way she was looking and the way she was processing and the song that was playing made me feel like she she, she did it. She did it, y'all. So now the question is for next week on the season finale. Somebody else is most likely gonna die. Yeah, because y'all was it, making it sound like it was gonna be this episode because y'all kept saying Courtney was, you know, saying that it was gonna be a big death in episode nine. I was like, first of all, stop watching her because she'll leak stuff where she'll play around with you. <laughs> yeah, so they won't. It won't no major death. So I, I not to me. No so, one wouldn't be a major death to me. Nah. So I, I think it's gonna be either Monet, Dante, or Lorenzo. It's gonna get killed next week. I thought it was gonna be Monet at the trash can today. Yeah, I did. I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll I see. think I think it's gonna be one of those three. Yeah, but we'll see next week. I can't wait. I can't. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. Although this was a good episode, it was putting a lot of things in motion for next week. Yeah. It was. So it's it, we have more questions than you have answers this yeah, week. Yeah. Lots of questions. So straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla, boo.